The well-established ways of connecting servers to storage is direct attached storage or DAS, which has been prevalent for many, many years. Uh, since then, you know, fiber channel based storage area network has been the most common way of connecting servers to storage. NAS is there, but NAS problem associated with NAS or network attached storage has been scalability and performance. People still use NAS to connect low performance, low cost storage to servers but predominantly today uh, most of the enterprises use fiber channel based storage area networks to connect servers to storage one quick word about file area network this is a way to manage file based data as opposed to block based data which is managed in the storage area networks if, if you look at the, the networks outside the data center right they're predominantly IP based networks and if you look at the applications well they were all mostly based on small amounts of data outgoing to the clients who sit outside the data center and for that the current ethernet based networks are fine but today we are talking about new applications like server virtualizations uh, you're talking about high performance clustering. You're talking about application clusters like uh, Exchange clusters or you know Oracle application clusters, which needs large amounts of data to be transferred across the network, which uh, call for high performance networks, which are basically should be low loss in terms of packet loss, etc., which should be fairly deterministic. And that has led to the evolution of the new protocols like um, fiber channel over Ethernet. Now, fiber channel over Ethernet is actually a collection of standards. Uh, they are being evolved as we speak. We expect the fiber channel over Ethernet standards to be sort of ready by early 2009. For fiber channel to run, a theoretically FCOE probably can run over a 10 gig Ethernet. However, the way Ethernet is supposed to react to congestion is by dropping packets. Obviously, in a storage uh, environment, it just cannot happen. So you have to have some sort of, you know, a transport protocol that is lossless, that is deterministic. In other words, it should behave more like fiber channel rather than Ethernet. So that has led to the evolution of what is known as Converge Enhanced Ethernet. And this is again a collection of standards which are being put together by ANSI T11, IETF, IEEE, etc., etc. And we expect CE to be solidified bunch of standards by maybe second half of 2009. For fiber channel over Ethernet, FCOE, to run efficiently, you need CE. Yes, sir, fiber channel over Ethernet, FCOE, and fiber channel uh, based storage and networks can coexist within the same data center. In fact, we feel that that will continue to happen for a fairly long time, uh, given the fact that a lot of enterprises have a, a major investment in fiber channel based uh, storage area network solutions. While FCOE will play a role in server-to-server -server consolidation, server-to-server -server networking, when it comes to connecting storage to servers, fiber channel will play a dominant role for a fairly long time. That's the reason why you'll see that today we've got 8 gig fiber channel based storage area networks and in a few years down the road you'll see 16 based fiber channel solutions. For fiber channel over Ethernet to run efficiently I mentioned CE transfer layer should be there and CE uh, needs to run on top of 10 gig based physical layer. One of the requirements for that lossless networks if you are using copper cabling for networking you need to have a category 6a now today if you look at most of the data net data center networks it is category 6 from that perspective if you want to make sure that all your server based communications are going to happen over you know networks surely you need to have uh, some sort of recabling then if it is optical based networking that you have in your data center probably not much of infrastructural change is needed for quite some time in the foreseeable future what I think we will will happen is uh, the storage based uh, storage area networks based on fiber channel will continue to be there and for high performance host to host networking you'll have fiber channel over Ethernet host adapters which can provide common connectivity to the storage via fiber channel ports and 
you know IP network as well so in other words uh, you can have a consolidated host bus adapter which can um, talk to storage as well as to networks FCOE we believe will probably become a main mainstream product by the year 2010-2011 till then it will be a uh, used in POC's test uh, environments etc you know or small scale deployments iSCSI was a big hype in the year 1999-2000 but it never took off and one of the primary reasons was iSCSI <laughs> if I want to put it very succinctly it was like uh, having a square peg of storage fitting into a round hole of Ethernet and the reason I'm saying is basically because the protocol had lots of uh, inefficiencies and therefore uh, it never could perform which led to a lot of dissolution with the customer so it never took off today if you look at the iSCSI deployments is less than one percent all over the world so I do not believe it will have any effect on iSCSI people who who are not looking for a very high performance applications who are okay with occasional outages etc yes probably will deploy SCSI but then it will be less than one percent so FCOE probably will not uh, affect that market much but FCOE and fiber channel they will continue to probably not really compete both will grow and at some point maybe you know they will converge and FCOE probably may have more traction than fiber channel but it'll take quite a few years before that happens